And then we had Shopify shipping. So we got Shopify shipping, shipping income account. Okay. This would also be an income account because we're paying for shipping, of course, but this is what we're charging for the shipping. So the, when the money goes out for shipping, then we will make, that's when we'll decrease the account when it hits the checking account, right? But right now we're charging for shipping. So that's gonna be income, a credit for 6.56. It's gonna be an income account. And then we'll have the related expense account that will bring the net income back down when we pay for the shipping. And then we had sales tax, sales tax. So I have sales tax to pay. Let's pick that one. That should be a liability account. So if you're gonna if you're gonna list this one, if you had sales tax, you would want to make it generally an other current liabilities, and and normal that the sales tax uh, isn't something that we can really do using the sales tax widget in QuickBooks so much because to do it right, we would have to enter the sales receipts or an invoice for each sale. And obviously we're not doing that because we're pulling in a group or summary of the sales. So we're gonna have to track our sales tax, you know, independently. So sales tax payable. You might also need to track sales tax by location, for example, so that you know where to remit uh, each sales tax. We might talk a little bit more about that in the future, but it's 15.45. It's a credit because it's a, it's a liability that we're gonna have to pay uh, and the liability is going up. And then we've got the Shopify PayPal a clearing account. So I'm gonna call it Shopify PayPal clearing account. And then this one uh, is usually, you can put it as an other current asset is what I would typically put it in. It's kind of like a, a bank account in some ways because we're, we have the money, but then we're gonna transfer it to the bank, but we don't, we're not gonna connect it to bank fees or anything. So generally, uh, an other current asset account, other current asset is usually what we would go with. There it is, other current asset, okay. And then it's, I'm just gonna call it other, other current asset. All right, let's say save on that one. And so that one is gonna be for the 1299.55. That's the amount that got paid out uh, but it's gonna go through the other portal to Shopify. So now instead of putting it into the shop of, I mean, to by PayPal, instead of putting it into the PayPal checking account, we're gonna put it into this clearing account. And that's probably necessary for PayPal because PayPal is gonna charge us a fee most likely before it actually goes into our PayPal account. All right, and then we're gonna have, the next one is gonna be fees. We're gonna say fees. Let's say fees and charges. I'll make that an expense. You might make that a cost of goods sold if you want. They're both kinds of expenses, decreasing net income. I'm gonna put it in as an expense. It's gonna be a debit of 15.48. And then we're gonna have then the Shopify clearing. Shopify uh, payments clearing. I'm gonna make up another clearing account. This is for the amount that was paid by customers through the Shopify portal. It's also gonna be an other current asset account. I'm just gonna put other current asset here, Shopify clearing account. So I'm gonna say, okay. And that's for the amount that was paid with the Shopify payments. And we know what that is. So we could put that directly into the checking account and then match it with the bank feeds because it should be exact. But the clearing account method is, is good so we so we might want to double check it with the clearing and that's basically it but if you had any other if you were off if your journal entry was off by an immaterial amount you might put the rest in you know shopify sales again shopify sales just to just to zero out your balance but the totals should be debits equal the credits and just like we had over here except we represented the debits and credits as positive and negative numbers and the, the, the debits and credits should basically be the same if you were to do this periodically for, for every time you got a payment, for example. And so you may be able to make this a reoccurring payment. And also note that when you get paid out by your Shopify, it, it might be useful. You might be able to set 
your payment schedules to be paid in a certain schedule. So if you can, if you can tell Shopify to pay you like every two weeks or something like that, that might make it less work to, to group your payments than if they paid out, you know, every day or something like that. So, but every time you you're matching the payout, then it would be a similar debit and credit. You would just have to make sure that you pull the proper numbers in uh, and categorize it. So you might, you know, make this a memorized transaction and then just adjust the amounts so that you can see where the debits and credits are. So let's see if hopefully we got this right. Let's save it and close it. If not, that's okay because I'll be able to see it. I'm going to check the financial statements now and see if it does what we would expect it to do. So let's go on over to our balance sheet and I'm going to say run this. Now I can kind of compare this to our worksheet over here. Let's, I'm going to make a copy of this. And before we did the second couple transactions, it would look like this. This would be our ending balances we had in our worksheet format. So let's go and check it out. So let's, we ran this for October. So uh, we know that the, the Shopify sales is going up. That's gonna be an income statement. Let's go to the income statement on the sales side. We've got the income items of uh, the Shopify sales. Now notice I have these sub accounts here because I pulled this in I, I created some of these accounts from the integration that we're going to use in a second in another example. So if you don't have like this other uh, little carrot right here, that's okay. That might be good. You know, might look better without it. But the point is that it's under the income item here for the discount. And then you've got the Shopify sales, which is the full amount. This is kind of a contra revenue account. It's a little out of order, you'll note because it's being ordered in QuickBooks by the, the account uh, name, alphabetical order within the account category of income. So you could use account numbers to order it differently because you would think this would be on top, for example, but they're all in the income category. That's the main thing. The discounts then decrease in it. And then we've got the shop of the, sh the shipping income an increase because that's what we collected on shipping to get to a total income. So if I minimize this total income of the 165446, uh, if I go over here uh, and we look at our income on our trial balance, everything down uh, to here was, was basically income, 165446, right? That's all part of the income section. And then we have the expense, which you could have put into cost of goods sold. If you, if you, you know, you can argue that that could be in cost of goods sold, but I'm going to put it in fees and charges for the expense. And so that matches this number here. So our net income, which is the sum of everything under the equity in our trial balance is one, six, three, eight, 98. So there's the one, six, three, eight, 98. That looks good. And then on the balance sheet side of things, it hasn't yet hit the checking account and it hasn't gone into our our paypal account yet uh what we have then is the amounts that went into the clearing account so these are clearing accounts because they're going to go up and then back down just like we did in our example problem over here they were here and then we're going to move them into our checking account and paypal checking with the use and help of the bank feeds which should bring these back down we're just going to move these from here up to here when they clear the bank feed transactions. So that's the general idea. And then we had the sales tax that we broke out down here as a liability because, uh, and then if we had to pay the sales tax, when we pay the sales tax, we're going to decrease the checking account and we're going to uh, credit, you know, uh, debit this or reduce this to bring it back down to zero. All right. So the next thing that's going to happen is we expect these amounts to then uh, enter our bank account with the bank feeds. So if I go to, and, and this one's not gonna go in there exactly because PayPal is gonna probably charge us a fee at the PayMail, PayPal processing level, whereas this one should be exact and I should be able to pull it right into my checking account. So let's do that if I go back on over here and let's do the, the, the exact one if I go into our checking